Today, I want to talk about something that's always fascinated me, even since I was a little kid, and that is, oh, well, that's vacuum tubes. And I just, I think they're such cool looking pieces of technology and they have really unique shapes and they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes with different purposes and, and they emit these really cool glow. And you can see that e even with these right here that they're glowing this really cool orange. And as a kid, I had no idea what any of that was, what any of it did or any, anything at all. And uh, lately I've been getting into it. I've been starting to read a lot more about vacuum tubes and I've been starting to learn a lot more about vacuum tubes. And uh, as you can see, I have quite a lot of vacuum tube projects currently going on. And so I thought it would be fun to kind of take you guys along with me as I explore and play with these vacuum tubes. But there's always been a couple things that have really terrified me about vacuum tubes, and that is the incredibly high voltages that they run at. Even as a kid, I knew that, you know, vacuum tubes would run at uh, over 100 volts, and, and that was dangerous. I'm a bit accident prone and, you know, I, I didn't really want to hurt myself. So I kind of stayed away from them. But recently I started playing with them at low voltages. And to my surprise, vacuum tubes seem to work pretty well at low voltages. And later on, we'll take a look at how they do that and, and what's going on at, at the low voltages that I'm working at. But first, we kind of need to understand what is a vacuum tube? And so the easiest way to do that is to take a look at probably the oldest, most easy to understand vacuum tube ever. And that is, well, the light bulb. And I know what you're saying, this is, this is not a vacuum tube, but hear me out. There's a lot more in common with this than vacuum tubes than you might suspect. I mean, we all know that a light bulb is a vacuum, right? When we crush it, it, it no longer works. And if you were to, somehow break the glass but leave the filament intact, the second that you powered it up, the filament would burn out immediately. So that vacuum is necessary for the filament to emit the light. And the history of vacuum tubes actually is connected very closely with light bulbs. And that's because one of the primary principles that vacuum tubes operate on is called thermionic emission. And it was discovered by several people independently while they were trying to discover why their light bulbs were failing early and why they were starting to blacken. They were finding black deposits on the inside of the bulb. And trying to figure this out led to the discovery of thermionic emission. And what thermionic emission is, is when the filament inside the bulb gets hot enough it starts to throw off electrons. And those electrons floating around inside the bulb are looking for a positive source to be attracted to. And that is the basic principle behind vacuum tubes. If we have the filament heating up and throwing off electrons, if we can just stick another plate in there that's positively charged, it can attract those electrons. And then we have a circuit being made. And this is actually how the first diode vacuum tubes worked. So let's pop over to the bench right quick and take a look at some diode vacuum tubes that I have and the differences between them and take a look at how they work. So first things first, let's just take a look at the light bulb. This is a really small light bulb that's intended for use in pinball machines. It just happened to be one that I had laying around. And they run on pretty low voltage. I think this one's rated at about uh, 6.8 volts or something like that. So I have my little bench power supply here and we can go ahead and uh, hook that up and, and maybe get in, maybe get a little view of how this thing illuminates. So if we turn the bench power supply on, you can see that we're pulling, uh, we're at half a volt and we're pulling, you know, really, really low amperage, but our light, light isn't coming on. And that's because it's rated for six volts. So as, as I start to bring the voltage up, oh, you can see we're starting to get a little bit of a glow out of it there. And that's only at one volt, 1 1.6 volts. So the more voltage I pump through it, the brighter and brighter it gets. Until we get up to uh, about six volts here, we'll go ahead and stop at about 6.3 volts. 
And you can see that's, well, that's, that's pretty bright. That's putting out a good amount of light. And so that's, that's a light bulb. Well, I mean, we're all really familiar with how light bulbs work. Uh, this, is, this is nothing really new here, but let's take a look at what's actually going on here. So if we just disconnect this, that out of the side, and in our little light bulb there, what we have is we have a filament, and that filament's actually made out of uh, tungsten. So that comes up, and then we've got this little circular filament here, and I'm putting uh, positive voltage into one side and putting the ground on the other side. And, and as the voltage gets up high enough, that starts to uh, glow and, and put out light. And this filament is actually almost identical to the filaments that are used in vacuum tubes. Uh, the construction's a little different, but the concept is, is pretty much the same. And what we talked about was thermionic emission. And so as this filament gets hot, it starts to let off little electrons. So the little electrons start to fly off the filament here and they don't really have anywhere to go unless we put an extra plate up here and we give it a positive voltage. All right, so if we give that plate a positive voltage, now these electrons are going to be attracted to that plate. And that's how we create a flow. But we have kind of an interesting situation here. You can see I've got positive voltage here, positive voltage here, and, and ground here. And this has to run on a very specific voltage, but we can run really high volts on this, you know, 100, 200 volts or, or so on. And well, that would just fry our little filament. And so what happens is that we create two separate loops here. All right, so we have our filament loop, and then this is the little power supply over here on the filament. And then coming off of this, we have another loop and then we, you know, within this loop, we can put our load or whatever and it goes all the way back around. All right, so because we have two separate loops and these loops don't actually ever share anything except for this one little point right here, the voltage from this loop never actually makes a complete circuit through the filament. As a matter of fact, all it's ever doing is just borrowing the filament to let electrons leap up this way, all right? Now, what's really, really interesting about this is that it's the heat that is required for thermionic emission to work. So this has to be hot for the electrons to come off of it, all right? And so if there's a positive voltage up here, the electrons go to the top. But what if we take this positive voltage and we change it to a negative voltage and we put a positive voltage down here instead. Well, what this is trying to do is it's trying to make electrons go in the opposite direction. But because this plate is not heated up, those electrons aren't leaving the plate. So that means that current's not gonna move in that direction. And, and what this is, is a diode, plain and simple. And if we remember our basic electronics, a diode is essentially a one-way valve. It allows current to flow in that direction, but not in that direction. And in that same way, the current, the electrons are allowed to flow in that loop, but they're not allowed to flow in this loop. And so this is a diode. And if we put all of this in a big vacuum enclosure, well, we have our very first vacuum tube. And it just so happens that I have a couple of vacuum tube diodes that use this same layout that we can maybe experiment and play with a bit. So the first diode is the 5642 vacuum tube diode. And if we pull out the data sheet here, uh, we can see that there's a whole lot of information going on here. But if we look at the second page, uh, we can see that the layout of the diode is 
Well, that's pretty much exactly what we drew. We have our filament down here, and we have our plate up here. Now, the plate is uh, designated with an A, and that A means um, anode, but a lot of people refer to it as plate, and the plate is a little easier for me to keep track in my head, so I tend to use plate, but, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're the same thing. And you can see that this is, this is laid out pretty much exactly the same way. So if we take this and we hook it up to its own separate power supply, and then we run off of here with a big positive voltage here and a negative voltage down here or our ground down here, we can create a diode. You know, this is, this is our load here in the middle. Now, what's interesting about this is, I mean, you can see it's called a half-wave rectifier. And, well, half-wave rectifiers are mainly used for turning AC into DC because, you know, we allow it to travel one direction, but we don't allow it to travel the other way. So the sine wave of AC can get cut off. So AC kind of comes positive and then negative and then positive and so on. But because we have a diode in there, everything down here can't transmit because the diode is blocking it. So now we just have our ground here and our positive up here. You get a lot of ripple, but that's what capacitors are for. Now the interesting thing about this particular diode is that it's designed for extremely high voltages. So you can see we have our, our sine wave input here, which is a VN with an RMS of uh, 3.6 kilovolts. Good Lord, that's a lot. Remember how I said I, I don't like to hurt myself? Uh, well, 3.6 kilovolts is a, is a great way to hurt yourself really badly. Uh, we can see that actually the max over here is, is 10 kilovolts. Good Lord, all right, so that, that's, that's, that's a lot of voltage. We're not gonna play with that, mostly because it's dangerous, but also because my little DC power supply here has a maximum of about 30 volts. So let's see what we can do with just 30 volts on this little 5642 vacuum tube. So we'll slide this out of the way and we'll take these and scoot them over here and we'll bring over my breadboard here. All right. So for now, we'll just kind of ignore what's going on on the back half of the breadboard and we'll just take a look at these two tubes here. And actually, I'm really only using one tube. And that's because if we look at our data sheet here, it gives us a little bit of information about the filament. And our filament's looking for uh, 1.25 volts, which is pretty low. And it needs to be a completely isolated power supply from the main supply that we're using for our, our primary circuit. And so I just decided to use this little AA uh, battery holder that I have here. But uh, AA's put out 1.5 volts, and these two AA's are connected in series, so that's three volts. And uh, so by running these in series, that creates a one and a half volt drop across each one. And one and a half volts is a little higher than the 1.25 volts. So we're overvolting the filaments a little bit, uh, but we're not gonna run it for very long. So I, I think it'll be okay. And so we have, you know, the tube here with the filament set up on 1.25 volts. And then I have some LEDs over here to kind of demonstrate how the diode effect is, is working. And so, the way this is set up is that this switch right here feeds into the plate on the top and it can feed in either uh, positive voltage or ground. And then coming out of the filament on the bottom, and just like in the diagram that we drew earlier, the wire comes off of the filament and runs over here and crosses over to these two diodes. And then the two diodes go through a resistor into another switch, and that little switch allows the diodes and resistor combo to either be connected to positive or to ground. Now, what this has done is that it's allowed me to create a way to visually see if a diode is functioning. Now, LEDs are just diodes, and so we'll slide this out of the way here for a second. And so essentially what, what we have set up is that we have, uh, you know, the filament set up on its own voltage source here, and that's going to be uh, 1.5 volts. And then coming off of the filament, go that way, and then above the filament we have our plate. 
Now, each one of these goes into a switch. And one of these switches goes to plus 24 volts, and that's what we'll bump that up to. And the other one goes to uh, ground. And then on this side, we have, it comes down, and then we split. And on one side, we go through a little LED. And on the other side, we go through an LED, but we go through it in the reverse direction. And then these two come together and go through a little resistor to another switch. And then that switch is connected to ground as well as 24 volts. So if the diode were not functioning, if we had 24 volts come in through here, pass through here, we pass through this LED, light that LED up, go through our current limiting resistor so we don't burn the LED to the ground, and then go to ground, all right? But if we were to switch the switches, if we were to pop this switch over to ground and pop this switch over to 24 volts, you know, pop those like that, pop that one like that, that 24 volts could, theoretically, if this diode didn't exist, could travel up through this uh, current limiting resistor, through this LED to illuminate there, through here, and to ground this way. All right, now remember, electrons travel in the opposite direction of what we think of as conventional current flow. So if we have a, uh, if we have a, a positive voltage up here, and we have our ground down here, we think of current as flowing this way. But the electrons are going to be flowing from, from our ground towards our positive, okay? So when this is at 24 volts, the current we think of as coming out of here, flowing through here, flowing through our LED into ground. But in reality, the electrons are coming from our ground, passing up this way and, and making their way back up to the 24 volts. And, that's uh, very important because our heater is what emits the electrons, all right? Now, if the diode didn't work, as we said earlier, uh, we, could, we could flip this 24 volts down here and this LED would illuminate. So that's what we have set up here. So if we bring this down, and uh, the first thing we'll do is that we will flip this little switch right here to turn our heaters on. And then we will take our power supply here and we'll connect it up to the poles here, like so, and like so. All right, and then we'll turn our power supply on here, and we'll go ahead and just bump the voltage up to about 24 volts. That seems to be a voltage that uh, I have good luck with running uh, vacuum tubes at. It's a pretty low voltage, but uh, it seems to work really well for our purposes. Now. The yellow LEDs I have here are essentially the same setup as our two diodes and, or essentially as our, our one diode and our two LEDs over here, except that I've eliminated this diode and just run a little jumper wire there. So right now you can see that we come in through positive here. Our positive comes in here, goes through our switch, through here, into our LEDs here. Now it, it travels through this LED through the 10,000 ohm resistor here into the center pin, out of the right pin into ground. Now, if I flip these pins in opposite directions, you'll see that the other LED has lit up. And that's because now the positive voltage is coming through here, out the center pin, through our 10,000 ohm resistor, through our LED, through into the center pin, and then back over to ground here. Now, we should be able to do the same here. Now, you can see that there's, well, there's no LEDs lit up, but if I switch, these switches this way. Ah, you can see that we have an LED lit up now. So what's happening is the positive voltage is coming out here, out the center pin of our switch, up to the plate. Now, that is this area right up here, all right? Coming out of the bottom where our filament is, we come over to here through our LEDs, through our 10,000 ohm resistor, into the center pin of the switch, out of that into the negative. But if I flip these again, 
Well, now we're doing the opposite. We've got positive voltage coming in this way through our 10,000 ohm resistor, through an LED that should be lighting up, but isn't, and then over to our filament. And then our plate at the top here is getting our ground. So our, di our diode is, is actually working here. You can see that when we pop this over to ground here, and we pop this one over to 24 volts here, there's no flow because our diode is completely blocking the flow this way. But it allows it to flow if we have 24 volts at the top and this on ground here. So our diode, our diode is working, which is amazing because it's, it's operating at just uh, 24 and a half volts. And we can actually just drop that down to 24 volts even. It, you know, it seems to work uh, just fine with no problems there. So that's amazing. So this, this diode, as, as we pointed out, was designed for uh, on the order of kilovolts. And yet it seems to be working just fine here. Now what's going on with this back half here? Now th this is a diode, but well, you can see it's dramatically different looking than, than these diodes up here. And that's because this diode is actually constructed a little differently than these. And to, to understand what's going on there, let's, uh, well, let's, let's take this out of the way and take a look at the, the paper here again. So we'll just turn our power supply off, pop our power cables out here. We'll turn off our, uh, our little filaments there and we'll go ahead and just slide this thing out of the way. Now with our previous setup, you can see we had a isolated power supply for the filament all by itself. And then the filament and the plate were the only two elements inside of the tube. Now this tube is a little different. This is actually a 6AL5. And you can see, well, you can see right off the bat, this layout here is, is very different looking. And we can also see that our, our heater voltage, our filament voltage is uh, quite a bit higher. You can see that, you know, the 6AL5 has a, uh, a heater voltage of 6.3 volts. So what, what's exactly is going on here? There's a lot more busyness going on in the middle here as well. Well, when they were developing vacuum tubes, they kind of discovered that using a directly heated uh, cathode on the bottom, which is what our filament was acting at, so using a directly heated cathode was not very efficient. So they found that they could really bump up efficiency if they used an indirectly heated cathode. So you have your, your filament coming in like this, and then above the filament, you have your cathode. Now the filament gets really hot and it heats up this cathode. And this cathode plate gets so hot that it starts to throw off electrons, just like before, but it's indirectly heated. So that makes life a little easier. And then of course, up top, just like before, we have our plate. And then we put a positive voltage on this plate and you know we can run our cathode down here and hook that up to our ground. And we have the exact same effect as before. We have our exact same diode, except that it's now indirectly heated. And well, we can now create a power source that shares the ground. All right, so we can, we can actually just hook you up to there and then have you come over to, you know, plus six volts. And this makes it a little easier to design the power supply and, and other things. So you'll notice that in my setup here, I, I'm not actually running a completely isolated power supply. I have a little uh, converter that will drop the voltage to 6.3 volts from 24 volts to make, to, to heat the, the filament without exploding it. But we can pretty much just hook the filament ground up to our regular power supply ground and it doesn't really cause a problem as long as we have a dedicated 6.3 volts coming in. All right and so this little tube that we have on there is a you know as we said the 6AL5 and you can see that in our little diagram here we have we have our heater down here at the bottom and then we have actually two cathodes and two plates. So this is a twin diode. There's two diodes inside of 
of this single tube. And that makes it really good for, you know, recti rectifying AC into DC as well. But also these operate on much lower voltages. Uh, that's all relative to the previous diodes that we were using. I mean, you can still see that the, the peak inverse plate voltage, that's, you know, going in the opposite direction is 330 volts. Um, and then the AC plate supply voltage per plate, it's about 117 RMS. So this, this vacuum tube is expecting, uh, you know, to deal with uh, AC, mains AC power. So that 120 volts that's coming out of the wall, that's, that's what this is designed to rectify and deal with. Uh, but that's still a lot higher than what my little DC power supply is capable of. Uh, but the other ones worked and they were expecting on the order of kilovolts. So let's, uh, let's see if this little 6AL5 will work as well. Now, I'm only using half of the diode itself. Uh, there's, there's twin diodes. I'm only using one in this, uh, in this example. And so you can see here that, that pin 3 and pin 4 are a heater. And, you know, I have that running out the back here, and that runs into my little uh, converter here that's going to drop the 24 volts that's on this rail uh, down to 6 volts for the heater. And then, you know, we, sh we share the negatives with everything. Uh, and then just, just like before, we have it set up. So the, the plate is, you know, we can see the plate here is going to be uh, pin seven. And then the cathode that equ equates to that plate is going to be pin one. So we're, you know, we're, we're using uh, the, the extreme edges of this seven pin. So pin seven is going to be all the way over here on the right. And then pin one is going to be all the way over here on the left. And just like before, we've got uh, positive and ground coming into our little switch. We have positive and ground coming into our little switch over here, and the LEDs are set up exactly the same. Uh, so theoretically, if the diode wasn't functioning, we should get one LED lit up in one direction and the other LED lit up in the other direction. But if the diode is functioning correctly, we'll only get one LED lighting up. So let's, let's go ahead and uh, hook this up and see, see what happens. So we'll hook our positive up there. We'll hook our, our negative up there. We'll go ahead and turn our power supply on. The, uh, the heater is starting to warm up. Now in the current arrangement that we have set up, remember pin seven is the plate. Uh, and right now our, our switch is set over to hook the plate up to negative. And this switch is set up to hook the LEDs to positive. And well, the LEDs are not illuminating because well, we're, we're trying to flow in the wrong direction through the diode. So if I flip this to positive and I flip this to negative, ah, Hey, there we go. We got an LED lit up. All right, check that out. So what we have is we have positive coming into this switch, out of that switch into the plate. And then we have the cathode on the bottom coming out, going through our LEDs, through our 10,000 ohm resistor and over to our ground over here. So there we go. You can see that, you know, just at a little under 24 volts there, we have a diode that is, well, dioding. It's doing what it's supposed to do. It's preventing flow in one direction and allowing flow in another direction. And well, that's, that's the basics behind uh, vacuum tubes. Now these are just uh, diodes and, and die is indicative of how many elements are inside there, which is just, you know, two elements. Essentially we have our, our cathode and our plate, uh, but there's a lot more vacuum tubes and they have a lot more purposes and uses than just uh, diodes. And next time we'll take a look at that. Next time we'll get into the triode and kind of see what they do with that and how those operate.